One of the big questions pertaining to RFK Jr.'s run is who will he steal the votes from? He is viewed largely as a spoiler candidate, although there are many people who think he could actually win. We've gotten some messages from Timcast members saying if RFK Jr. were to actually debate Biden and Trump, he would win the presidential election because he would do so well. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I believe now, especially with this article from CNN, it is clear that RFK Jr. is going to take votes from Joe Biden. The polls show as much. His political ideology shows as much. And the question then becomes, is RFK Jr. doing this on purpose to help Donald Trump? I've been saying this for a while. He has to know he's pulling progressive votes away from the Democrats, which means he is a spoiler for Biden and Trump will win. And I think he does know that. Now, I'm not going to pretend I can, I can read the guy's mind. Maybe he genuinely wants to win and he wants to defeat Trump. But in this article from CNN, they write, RFK Jr. argues that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump. In this segment, my friends, I have a, a, another breakdown from a, there's a tweet about Matt Taibbi's response to why he's focused on Democrats. I think it's important to point out Matt Taibbi is uh, late to the party that many of you have already been at because you've been here since 2016. I have somewhat been there, but more so 2020 with deciding to vote for Trump over Joe Biden. And for Matt Taibbi, he does great work. He uh, more recently in the past several years has started going after the uniparty establishment, principally the Democrats and their corporate buddies. He breaks down exactly why. And I think it's important you all hear this. Now, there are many people who may be voting for RFK Jr. I suggest if you could share this video and let's hear what RFK Jr. has to say. And then what Matt Taibbi has to say about the Democratic Party. From CNN, independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. argued Monday that President Joe Biden is a greater threat to democracy than former President Donald Trump. His argument made on CNN's Aaron Burnett out front centered around being blocked on social media platforms during the Biden administration, which he labeled as an effort to censor political speech and undermine the First Amendment. Quote, I can make the argument that President Biden is much a much the, the much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech. So to censor his opponent, Kennedy pointed to his removal from social media platforms, which he attributes to pressure from the Biden administration as evidence of the president's efforts to censor political speech. I will pause now and let you all uh, make sure you're all aware there's an active lawsuit right now that uh, I believe is in the Supreme Court pertaining to this specifically because the Biden administration's DOJ was in direct contact with the White House saying things like, why aren't you taking this person down? Why hasn't this person been banned? Now, the argument is that these federal agencies were simply pointing out rules violations and flagging them the same as anybody could. Unfortunately, that argument is bunk. Federal agencies had back channels to the executives at Twitter and other platforms. So as I jokingly mentioned the other night, the only day that mattered in my life when I was on Joe Rogan with the executives from Twitter, I pointed out there are numerous far left accounts that threaten violence, organize violence and break the rules, and they don't get banned. But you get the editor in chief of the Daily Caller saying learn to code and he gets suspended instantly. And then you say it's just flagging like anybody else. So when the federal federal government has law enforcement agents and intelligence agents directly emailing the executive saying this should be banned. That's no different than someone flagging a tweet. Then why are these leftist tweets staying up? Now, Twitter, of course, is no more. It is now X and owned by Elon Musk and greatly different. But let's uh, read how they frame this one. Kennedy pointed to his removal from these platforms. Kennedy's Instagram account was suspended in 2021 for repeatedly sharing debunked claims about the coronavirus or vaccines but was reinstated last year shortly after he announced his presidential campaign. Meta, Instagram's parent company, cited his White House bid as the reason for restoring Kennedy's account in a statement. In December, the Supreme Court blocked Kennedy from joining a challenge to a case brought by, by the Missouri and Louisiana attorneys general concerning the Biden administration's communications with social media companies about posts the government views as disinformation. Kennedy currently has a similar case pending in a lower court. Kennedy who has made freedom of speech issues a central focus of his campaign, testified last year before the House Judiciary's committee, subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government. 
Kennedy was invited by House Republicans to speak as part of their investigation into alleged censorship against conservatives at social media companies. I would just like to stress, but perhaps better shriek as loudly as I can while banging my head on the wall. It is not a theory or a perception. It is a historical fact. Social media companies were censoring conservatives. And I can't believe I have to do this every single time, but I'm going to. I am going to pull up the original article that kicked this whole thing off because it's important. I know that many of you have friends and family members who will say it's not true. Eight years ago from Gizmodo, not a conservative website, former Facebook workers, we routinely suppressed conservative news. This kicked the whole thing off. What happened? Conservatives news outlets would share stories and Facebook would delete them and censor them, remove them from the trending tab. And so instantly, many people started saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. like the Daily Caller, the left just says it's all fake news. It's, it's not better rating than MSNBC, by the way. But MSNBC is allowed, despite the fact that NewsGuard rates it as a conspiracy theory website. They really do. Let's uh, let's just I, I always got to do this. Because I know this one's for uh, this one's for the, the 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 lefties who may end up watching this video, so we'll just pull up that their old good old MSNBC.com, and NewsGuard gives them a forty nine point five out of one hundred. Proceed with caution. This website generally fails to maintain basic standards of accuracy and accountability. CNN, on the other hand, has a much better eighty out of one hundred. The website mostly adheres to basic standards of credibility and transparency. MSNBC is garbage, but they were suppressing conservative outlets that had a higher rating. Because that's the censorship game. They've gone to say that he's made it a big issue. Kennedy said that while he believes Biden and Trump are both ill suited to be reelected in November, he does not believe rhetoric suggesting either candidate would destroy democracy. He added that if he had to label one a greater threat to democracy than the other, He'd choose Biden because he feels the president has been weaponizing the federal agencies against his opponents. And that is also a fact. The independent candidate acknowledged that Trump's attempt to overthrow 2020 was clearly a threat to democracy, but maintained his belief that Biden is a greater threat. Quote, I think that is a threat to democracy, overthrowing, trying to overthrow the election clearly is a threat to democracy. But the question was, who is a worse threat to democracy? And what I would say is, I'm not going to answer that question. But I can argue that Biden, that President Biden is because the First Amendment, Aaron, it's is the most important. I'm not going to defend Trump on that. And it was appalling. And there's many things that President Trump has done that are appalling. The Democratic National Committee responded to Kennedy saying the statement that there is no comparison between Biden and Trump. You're right. There is no comparison. Biden went to Merrick Garland, his attorney general, and said, prosecute my political opponent. New York Times reported this. He called him something, a studious something or other, and said, stop being so studious and go after Trump. And they did. Now Trump has criminal charges. And of course, I'm sure many on the left will say, but Trump was an insurrectionist, so he, sh- he should, he should do this. So if the question is, there has been no investigation into, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, wrong word. There has been no proper adjudication of the Texas v. Pennsylvania Supreme Court case. That's the the appropriate uh, way to phrase that. And we're sitting here, those of us who pay attention to how this government is functioning, concerned about what happens in 2024 when the Supreme Court refuses to answer questions of original jurisdiction. And then you've got Joe Biden trying to jail his political opponent. How about whatever it is you think the American people decide? This is the fascinating thing. The Supreme Court, Supreme Court already ruled you can't remove Trump from the ballot. But here we are. Joe Biden says, I don't care what the American people want. Now, understand this. Let's say that Donald Trump did in, engage in insurrection. He didn't. He literally tweeted out, go home peacefully, obey law enforcement, etc. And uh, uh, let's say he did. Let's say Donald Trump said, I'm the true winner and I refuse to leave office. And the majority of the American people said yes. Explain to me what democracy is from your perspective, leftists or liberals. What's democracy? Do you believe that if Trump is so dangerous, Joe Biden, even though he does not have democracy on his side, should remove him 
and prevent him from being able to run for office? Or does democracy mean that even if Trump has been accused of these worst things, and even if he did them, the people must have their say? <clears throat> right now, we can take a look over at all these polls. What do we have? Trump's winning. YouGov, Trump's up by one. Harris X, including Kennedy, Trump is up by two. Harris X with no Kennedy, even 50-50. From Ledger, Trump is up 41 to 37. That's amazing. They also, uh, uh, Canadian press has Trump at 47 and Biden at 43. Beacon Research, Trump 51 to Harris 45. That's funny. You have this one, uh, same company. Now it's Trump v. Biden. Trump is up five. When you, uh, when you take, when you add Kennedy, Trump remains up five. So my point is this. You may hate Trump. You may think Trump is the worst person ever. But if democracy is your goal, then the American people can choose to vote for whoever they want. Removing Trump from the ballot is not democracy. It's fascism. Joe Biden trying to imprison Donald Trump is not democracy. It's fascism. And so tell me how it's democracy to stop the people from being able to vote for the person they want. I'm sorry. Democracy means the majority rules, right? We all vote and whatever happens, happens, even if it's unjust. Now you understand why we are not big fans of democracy. You see, as Benjamin Franklin put it, democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what's for lunch. A, uh, and liberty, I believe he said, is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. And therein lies the challenge. In a direct democracy, the most evil person could still win. So if you are sitting here saying Trump is bad, he's evil, he shouldn't be president, I got, I got bad news for you. I, real bad news. Well, our democracy has decided he should be, at least right now in the polls. Maybe we'll see something different in November. Perhaps there's a lot of news and a lot of opinions can change by then. But for now, Biden's attempt to imprison Donald Trump, as well as these other states, the stripping of his assets, fly in the face of democracy. Right. Now, many people ask, why are uh, people like me, Matt Taibbi and others, so heavily focused on Democrats? I remember a few years ago, my mom asked me this. Like, oh, you make all these videos about Democrats. What about Republicans? And I said, oh, OK, yeah, I'll make a video about Re which Republican. Well, I, I, the Republicans do bad things. I'm like, well, OK, what did they do? Huh? See, my mom, since then, at asking a good question, she then says, OK, and started paying attention. Now she's like, you're right. I totally get it. Matt Taibbi breaks it down. April Harding tweeted, Matt Taibbi was asked, why doesn't he pay much attention to the sins or threats from the right? And he gave a great answer. And this is the exact answer that I gave many years ago. I, not, not, not exact, but it's, it's very much in line. <clears throat> why I don't spend a lot of time on the Republicans? One, there's an enormous army of mainstream media reporters already going after them from every angle, with most major news organizations little more than proxies for the DNC. To the point where stations hire Biden spokespeople as anchors, Jen Psaki and MSNBC. More importantly, they're usually lying. And so even if a Republican does something bad, the coverage that needs to come out is stop making me defend this person. Back in 2017, 2018, a lot of the segments I was doing was stop making me defend Donald Trump. But they wouldn't. And that was it. Trump would do something kind of stupid and you'd say, yeah, that was dumb. And they'd act like he murdered a kitten. And you'd be like, no, he did not. They say Trump said Mexicans are all rapists. No, he didn't. That's a lie. Two, Republicans have very little institutional power nationally. It's not their point of view prevailing in schools, campuses, newsrooms, where over 90 percent of the workers are, are uh, reporters vote blue. And especially in the intelligence and mili military apparatus, which has openly aligned itself with Democrats. Even if Donald Trump were a threat to democracy, he lacks the institutional pull to do much damage which can't be said of Democrats. I made this point during the Trump's, uh, Trump's first term, first, that it, the, the one good thing about it is it's one of the first times or the first time in my lifetime that the executive branch has, has had its power checked and rescinded. So when Donald Trump can't even stop riots, yeah, I'm not super concerned about the threat to democracy. When Joe Biden tells his AG to arrest Trump, to criminally charge him, I'm pretty dang concerned. Now, I agree. When Trump was saying, we're going to lock her up, you'd be in jail. I was like, whoa, man, I don't like this. I don't like this talk. 
I didn't vote for Trump in 2016. And then guess what? Trump did not arrest Hillary Clinton. He did not do any of the things they claimed he was going to do. The economy was doing well. He was securing our border. He brought back auto manufacturing to Michigan. It was pretty great. Three, the Democrats' ambitions are significantly more dangerous than those of Republicans, from digital surveillance to censorship, to making intel and enforcement agencies central players in domestic governance. All plans being executed globally, as well as in our one country. They are thinking of a mu- on a much bigger and more dangerous scale than Republicans. I lived in third world countries and the endless criminal indictments of people like Trump and ongoing lawfare efforts to prevent even third party challenges are classic authoritarian symptoms. The Republicans aren't near this kind of capability. Correct. Four. Last and most important, Democrats are being organized, organized around a more potent, but also much dumber, more cult like ideology. People like Yuval Harari and his transhumanist divinity divinity concept scare me a lot more than Republicans. And I was once undercover in in an apocalyptic church in Texas. Ask your average Russian or Cuban what overempowered pseudo intellectuals are capable of. I have a pretty good record of picking dangerous phenomena ahead of time. I feel confident on this one. And that's before we get to the demographic class shifts in the parties. Yeah, Democrats are the party of the ultra wealthy. That's been that's that's been true for a long time. Let me make I'll get this one for you. Party of the rich Vox.com going way back to 2016. And it is now a fact. Democrats are replacing Republicans as the preferred party of the very wealthy. June 3rd, 2016. Majority of six figure incomes are voting Democrat. That's the reality. And their argument is we're smarter than you. They're not working class. That's not the reality. The reality is they're uppity elites who thinks they're in, they think they're entitled and they deserve things. And, they're, and there's a threat coming from the working class against them. Now, the last thing I want to give you is uh, to help all of you understand what Matt, Matt Taibbi is saying and what RFK Jr. is concerned about. What is wokeness? Bryce Green, I love when they do this. Always pick the low hanging fruit. Don't you dare ever come on to Timcast IRL and face down a real debate. <clears throat> he says, Kaya, libs of TikTok. You can't do anything in peace. Uh, uh, you can't do anything in peace being shoved down your throat wherever you go. I think he meant without wokeness or something. He says, LOL. Haya says, do you have a question? It's something funny. Me. I do. How do you define wokeness? Haya says, wokeness is the destruction of normalcy, etc. Um, let me play the video for you. It's, uh, it's in our kids' schools. It's on college campuses. It is in the workforce. Uh, it is in the streets. It's when you go to the store. I mean, like... You can't do anything in peace without this wokeness being shoved down your throat wherever you go. Um, so, do you have Tasty. a question? Is there something funny? I do. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, how do you define wokeness? Wokeness is the destruction of normality and and um, how do you define wokeness? <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I can easily define wokeness for you, and I've done it many times. Woke is broadly defined as cult-like adherence to leftist social orthodoxy. Now, in and of itself, that seems relatively broad, and it is. The reason? Leftist orthodoxy changes as it has no moral foundation, though its current iteration is strongly rooted in critical theory, postmodernism, and their derivatives. Meaning, you have postmodernist thought, you have critical theory, critical race theory, critical gender theory. What is critical theory? Let me slow you down. Rooted in Marxist ideology that there, is, there are the oppressed and the oppressors. Critical race theory believes that there are oppressed and oppressors not based on class, but based on race. Kimberly Crenshaw, when she wrote the book, and I believe many other scholars uh, contributed, argued that Marx did not understand racial dynamics in other countries because where he comes from was largely white. And although there were ethnic issues in the United States, the white versus black phenomena lends itself to the idea of an oppressed versus oppressor being rooted in race. Thus, critical race theory was born. Critical gender theory is typically similar in that men, the cis heteronormative patriarchy, etc., etc. Now, the reason why I say it's cult like adherence to leftist social orthodoxy is that leftist social orthodoxy changes because there is no moral foundation. Postmodernist thought. Let's dive into that. Woke is typically rooted in there. It quote, there is no truth but power End quote. It was the late David Graeber, an anthropologist who said 
This is several years ago that elements of the left have adopted fascistic ideologies such as there is no truth but power. That was a key component of Nazism. I am not saying that woke people are Nazis, although they share a lot in common with typical authoritarian regimes. Now, Haya Reichick perhaps could not on the spot adequately define wokeness, but I could give you a whole breakdown. There are many people like Ben Shapiro, for instance, and, uh, and Haya, for, uh, for instance, who want to define wokeness and say it has to do with postmodernist, blah, blah, blah. The reason why I say that's wrong is because woke as a political faction does describe certain phenomena that changes. And so we may be able to be able to identify key components of it today, like critical race theory. The issue is the overarching faction of leftist social orthodoxy that we associate with wokeness is broad and meaningless. Now, hold on. What does it mean? Meaningless. Ask yourself why it is that the same people who are woke defend Ukraine war. What about I don't know, critical race theory lends itself to waving a Ukrainian flag. OK, what about defending uh, uh, minorities getting preferential treatment in the workplace has anything to do with covid masks, vaccines and lockdowns? Nothing. Literally nothing. So what does woke mean? Well, you can find different groups of people who identify key components of wokeness in various ways. And they will tell you wokeness is postmodernist thought in a modern context, blah, blah. And then I pause and say the reason why I define woke as cult like adherence to leftist social orthodoxy is because if you were to take a broad view of all of the criticisms of woke, that's what you get. Hyper focusing in one area will wield you its critical gender theory. It's postmodernist philosophy. It's fascistic tenets. It is critical gender theory or critical race theory. It is critical theory. It is Marxism. All of these different things are because constitutional Republican moral foundation Americans are looking at one component of what woke is. And so what do you end up seeing with woke? It is the leftist social orthodoxy. Now, there are people who follow the leftist social orthodoxy who are not woke. Why? They don't adhere to it in a cult like fashion. You may describe these individuals as default liberal. You meet them and they say these things and then you ask them, and they go, honestly, I don't know that much. I don't know. I just saw that. There's no cult like adherence to it. So wokeness is typically, for instance, a big brand uh, puts up a Black Lives Matter flag and says, we, we agree with Black Lives Matter. That's woke. Why? It is the cult like adherence to a leftist social orthodoxy that is fleeting. Black Lives Matter is not even in the conversation anymore. Let's entertain this. The Black Lives Matter Global Foundation was accused of funneling money into private properties and other crazy, ridiculous expenditures. And now it's no longer an equation in the woke world. But woke persists. Why? Because woke is defined as cult like adherence to leftist social orthodoxy. So when we say when the average person says, this is woke. You need to ask them, whittle it down to the granular what you specifically mean. But I will tell you the reason why I define it broadly is this corporation adhe uh, adhering to leftist social orthodoxy for no reason, with no explanation, no ideology and no moral foundation. Bud Light got woke, went broke. What does that mean? The company had no idea what's going on. They just decided to march in lockstep with the likes of Dylan Mulvaney. Of course, the media will lie and say it was one promotional can. Wrong. Bud Light hired Dylan Mulvaney to grab a bunch of beer cans, promote March Madness a year ago, something like March Madness, and was paid reportedly six figures to do so. The media then obfuscated this by claiming it was all an outrage over one promotional can that never even got sold anywhere. Wrong. The outrage started when Dylan Mulvaney did a paid commercial for Bud Light. So what is woke? It is exactly that. Bud Light decided to get on board with leftist social orthodoxy for promotion and which this this includes gender ideology and things of that nature. And then they lost one point four billion dollars. So to wrap this all up in a neat little bow, the right, the quote unquote right, the far right, whatever of the culture war is a disparate group of varying ideologies that often disagree with each other. Hence, the difficulty in organizing. 
woke is the left marches in lockstep, terrified in a Mexican standoff of being canceled. And so they adhere to a ever influx leftist social orthodoxy, which doesn't really mean anything other than you are a part of the swarm or else. To put it simply, while we currently do say that woke has strong components of postmodernism and critical theory and Marxism in it. For the most part, the people who are woke are just in a swarm of wasps, worried that if they break ranks, they will be attacked by the hive. So they just march in lockstep. Woke. And so I wrap this up, good sirs and madams. RFK Jr. must know what he's doing. The polls show he's helping Trump. He thinks Biden's the bigger threat. Coincidence? I don't think so. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.